Without fair share, this community would have nothing. Fair share has brought a lot of money into the community. It's been spread around. It's been mainly on sustainable projects, which I believe in, in following through. When fair share funding ends, the projects will keep on running, no doubt about it. Thanks to the uh, Fair Share Trust, we've got, now got uh, a watertight roof on here. Uh, the activities we've got in here, everybody is sound, safe and in a secure environment. Well, we've got various things going on. We've got three art classes per week, knitting, sewing, uh, run bingo sessions, which are the main fundraiser for the centre. But it's run for four days during the week and a Saturday. We close on a Sunday for deep cleaning, keep the centre going. What we have spent fair share on, we can see something for the money. It won't disappear. <laughs> we can see something for it. We're in Dinosaur School at Curtin Lane Primary School. This is um, a therapy uh, for children with low self-esteem. Also, it's a parenting group uh, that runs alongside Dinosaur School that is a therapy for parenting and parents with low self-esteem. Wow, my name's Dina Dinosaur. I'm the head of Dinosaur School. Dina's probably just the novelty that um, the children love. Dina, she's very well respected. She's got as much respect as the head has in school. Um, the children don't think of her as a puppet. They think of her as the head. The Dinosaur School came alive with the funding from Fairshire. Um, they were, the funding from Fairshire helped us uh, all the way to treat parents how we wanted parents to be treated in our parenting group. When I became head four years ago, um, we had got lots of projects in mind to do in the school, but very limited funding. And then Fair Share came along and they'd got money to spend on worthy projects. And so we came up with a project. Our initial project was called Top to Toe, a project that was going to involve parents and children. And one of the main um, areas we wanted to concentrate on was health and well-being and getting our parents back to work. So the first project was a project around that area. We started basically with four trees. It's the saying that we've got at school. Um, we had nothing but lawn and, and these four trees, as we've said, and from there we've uh, created outdoor areas, we've established gardening, we've established um, a real learning experience for the children that's shown them that food doesn't just come from supermarkets, you know, and there's a lot of work involved in growing and creating. Um, food and also um, developing pride in local surroundings. Fair Share Money provided us with equipment um, and the means to get the projects rolling and, and, and growing really. Um, it allowed us to um, invite parents in um, to help us establish these areas and we found that a lot of the parents in, in us starting the gardening project um, of, of coming to school and try to offer their skills as well and it's really uh, engaged the community in, in, in running. The children have absolutely loved the project. Um, it's just the, the awe and wonder stuff from, you know, you plant a, a tiny seed and which grows into a potato and, uh, but also the thing that they've loved is creating areas of pride. On a morning you see them talking to the to the grandparents or parents and saying, look, we've done this today, we added this path, we did this, mum, I did this. Um, and it's really, I think it's enhanced the school in, in, in the community um, in terms of respect and, and pride. One of the objectives for the priorities in Stainforth was around education, training and delivering opportunities. And obviously what we're seeing here, working with sort of children from 4 through to 11, is sort of setting those seeds for future development. And as I say, we're sort of educating people on a two level because through the children we're reaching the parents here at Curtin Learn. And with that we're instilling sort of pride in the community, community respect and involvement. And I think it's a very positive way that we've chosen to spend the fair share monies to try and reach people that perhaps we couldn't have reached otherwise. Four years on, we have done um, three very successful projects. We've worked with the community, uh, we've worked with parents, and we've encouraged parents to go back to work if they can. Uh, we've worked with um, the old folks with our gardening project. 
We have um, done some awards with the Royal Horticultural Society, worked closely with Woodland Trust, and I think all the projects have made a real improvement to our school and our area. During the first phase of the programme there were various capital projects so there were a couple of playgrounds that received attention, some new equipment, fencing, those sorts of things. There was also the roof for the resource centre and the cricket pavilion which was updated and, and re renovated. Um, so I think that was a good start to the project but I think perhaps in the middle phase of the programme it perhaps lost its way a little bit because people didn't know what to spend the money on to achieve the priorities that were set out. Specifically, you know, environment was one of the priorities uh, and whilst there's projects here at Curtin Lane and there's the allotment project, there hasn't really been anything achieved, say, around the marina area along the, the waterfront, which I think was initially envisaged. I think that the IT project's been very important. I also think that um, from the point of view of health, public health in the area, the allotments project's been very important. Um, I mean, growing our own food is something that a lot of us aspire to and don't actually manage to get to. So I'd love to be able to grow my own food, but I'm afraid I'm very sporadic about it. So perhaps I need to get an allotment in Stainforth. Fair share is our fairy godmother. What they've done is they've given us enough funding to put the metal fencing all the way around, make it more secure. Uh, they've also given us enough funding to do up the lodge. We used to call it the hut because that's about all it was. But we've done it up wonderful and we've got four toilets, two ladies, two gents, uh, two dis uh, disabled of each. It's used far more now than it ever has been before. Thanks. In the winter it will just be open for two hours on a Saturday morning because there's so few people come down. But in the summer, spring, summer and autumn is the busy time down here. And of the 94 allotments, there's only four not occupied, but we have a waiting list of two. The main thing in the village Fair Share funded was the improvements to the towpath between uh, Stainforth High Bridge and the new inn public house. Uh, it had always been a towpath, but it had only been a one foot wide uh, limestone, well, not even a path. Uh, so people did use it who could use it, but obviously there were restrict restrictions to it. Um, we improved it to a four foot wide uh, limestone path with uh, timber sides on it, um, about 120 yards long, but it is always used now and it's used by push chairs and mobility scooters as well. The problem I think in our village is people like to see things be done. The, the, we have trouble getting them involved with new ventures, volunteering and things like that, but things that can see appear and improve obviously, you know, they, they can see the effect it's having. So um, the improvements to the playground and the pavilion and things like that, the, the things people notice straight away that have been improved. So, um, and like the towpath, it's, uh, it's things that can sit spot straight away. And uh, I think it has had a positive effect. We've applied for funding for a, a project around a sports coordinator, a sports leader, really. Um, We've called it, we, we named it the FAST project, something I invented because it, I wanted something snappy that we could recognise it by, which is fit and active Stainforth together. So it was very much about trying to bring Stainforth children together to work sort of as a team and build relationships there and uh, employing a sports coach to, across the three Stainforth schools um, with the ultimate aim of improving children's fitness, interest in sport. I think one of the main differences we'd like to make is to try and build relationships between the children across the three schools. Um, there's always an element of rivalry in a, in a small town or village of this size between the children from the different schools and they all have to come together at some point once they reach secondary school but we know that that transition can be quite an issue. So if we started quite early, we're working with your year four or five children, um, and although it's going to culminate, the sports will culminate in a tournament, the tournament's intended to be friendly and about sportsmanship and supporting each other and getting on, so hopefully building those relationships that will take forward into the secondary school. Without fair share funding, we wouldn't have been able to progress the project really. We tried something very small at lunch times whereby we used a sports worker to work with children to engage them in sporting activities and improve relationships at lunch times and avoid um, little fallouts and issues. And we'd found that to be very successful. 
Um, obviously there would be the ordinary sports activities that happen in a school but certainly nothing um, after school that we could provide for free so um, you know that's made all the difference. There wouldn't be a Stainforth club without the money from fair share it's as simple as the amount of money that needed I didn't have it personally I couldn't have got it from businesses so the money from the fair share is the reason why Stainforth Amateur Boxing Club bit long, you know, belongs as part of the community. It did a lot for me, it kept me off the streets, taught me self-discipline, uh, respect for others, and I'm hoping that's what it's going to do for these, and that's what I, that's, I see that in the youngsters anyway. They come to the gym, some of them have had problems with home, and they come and they have a bit of an attitude, and we soon forgive the pun, but we knock them into shape. I come to keep fit. Also, I've, I've, when I first come, I decided to keep fit, but now I've got my medical and I'm going to go um, more or less take, go more for a career about it now. And it's, uh, it's good because before I didn't have used too much, I was just up and down like my mates, and now I keep fit and it gives me something to do and it's, it's good, I enjoy it. Well, boxing's a brilliant sport. Out of all the sports I've done in the past, I think this one's best, so that's why I decided to keep doing it. It gives me a sense of uh, that I'm a part of something like a boxing uh, team. And like waking with all my mates and getting better with them. If I wasn't here, I'd probably be sitting at home playing on my Xbox, probably maybe getting up to no good. And they, you know, they start to have respect for the club, its belongings, the procedures that we follow, the training, the, the, the strict times that we hold if we're late, we're not happy. So, you know, the, I think it, do, it will do good, I know for a fact it will.